Good evening. My name is Perry Hibner, and I am the lead survey strategist for the Donovan Group. I am sorry that I can't be in person with you tonight, as I had already scheduled a presentation to the Onalaska School Board about a community survey we recently administered for that district. I was also asked to attend a school board meeting in Belleville tonight to present on a community survey we recently administered for the district. I put together a short video and offered to do the same for the Adams Friendship Area School District. I recently shared with District Administrator Tom Wormuth and his team a report on the community survey we administered for the Adams Friendship Area School District, and I'm going to take a few minutes going over some of the slides. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, I hope everybody can see this. We always begin by reminding districts the survey isn't a scientific sample. However, over the years, we have found our community survey results to be very indicative of what residents believe about the questions and statements provided. You will see we kept the survey open for a little more than two weeks. A postcard was mailed to each household in the district, encouraging adults to take the survey, giving them a QR code to access the survey, and letting them know when the survey would be open. The district also sent out emails and used social media and other communications tools to remind residents. Before we look at the data, I will remind everyone we have we set up three groupings. The first column shows the percentages of all 437 residents who completed the survey. The second column shows the percentages for the 146 residents who were part of what we call a comparison group. Current parents of preschool or school-aged children, employees, and in surveys where students participate are not part of the comparison group. The comparison group does include parents of former district students, along with grandparents of current, sorry, my script went a little too far, of current students. We also include a third column, which provides a weighted average of those who are affiliated with the district and the comparison group. In most districts in Wisconsin, about 70% of eligible voters do not have an affiliation with the district, which is why that group was given a 0 0.70 weight. Those who are affiliated with the district receive a 0 0.30 weight. More than 48% of all respondents know that they are satisfied with the district. It was interesting to see that percentage actually increase with the comparison group. Normally, we see a drop of 10 to 15 percentage points between all respondents in the comparison group. That suggests the district does have some work to do with its families and staff to increase satisfaction levels. These numbers are about 20% lower than what we are seeing with other districts we work with in Wisconsin over the past couple of years. With nearly 9% of, re of all respondents not having an opinion, this is also an opportunity for the district to raise the percentage of those who agree or strongly agree with this statement going forward. More than 76% of all respondents and nearly 70% of the comparison group indicated they were well informed or had some familiarity with the budget and facility challenges the district is facing. This indicates the district has done a good job of informing the community but that there is still ample opportunity for the district to continue to engage stakeholders in the coming months, as about one third have no familiarity with the challenges. The numbers for this statement and the questions that follow are encouraging, in part because we often find low satisfaction levels impact how residents view the rest of the survey. That didn't happen here. Also, in most cases, the percentage of respondents who strongly agree or agree to this question or statement tends to be higher than the support, than support for specific solution. This question often sets the ceiling for support for specific solutions, in this case, for a potential operational referendum. It is also very interesting that the percentage of those who strongly agree or agree that the district's most urgent financial needs must be addressed now is nearly identical across all three groups. You'll see I bolded at the bottom the combined results of those who strongly agree or, dis or agree with the statement in all three groups. 
Nearly 80% of all respondents supported that statement, while more than 76% of the comparison group and 75% of the weighted group did so. The results to this statement are very encouraging. More than 60% of all respondents indicated they would definitely or probably support an operational referendum question in November. The weighted category still had more than 55% support and the comparison group had nearly 55% support, which bodes well for the district if the right amount and tax impact are determined. There is also room for growth as 23 to 26% of all three groups indicated they needed more information before deciding. As mentioned previously, when specific solutions are presented, the level of support compared to general questions tends to decrease. Still, these numbers are very encouraging and it is interesting that, the higher, that they are higher than the percentage of those who strongly agreed or agreed to the previous statement. More than 61% of all respondents would support an operational referendum question to allow the Adams Friendship Area School District to exceed the, rev the, exceed the revenue limit over the next four years for a total of 12.6 million. As you can see, the tax impact for each year was included when we asked that state, when we provided that statement. More than 57% of the comparison group and nearly 57% of the weighted group also supported this statement. Also, please note there is room for growth as 17 to 21% 20 20, of all three groups indicated they needed more information. I know I sound like a broken record and okay for our younger viewers and those in attendance who may not know what that is, what a broken record is, I'm sure those of us my age or older do, but I'll say it again. In most cases, the percentage of respondents who strongly agree or agree to this statement tends to be higher than the support for specific solutions. This statement often sets the ceiling for support for specific solutions, in this case, potential facility solutions. To have nearly 86% support from all respondents, more than 81% support from the weighted group, and more than 79% support from the comparison group is very encouraging. I will note that many of the responses I read in the qualitative questions residents were asked about providing additional feedback indicated there was a lot of uncertainty and potential misinformation about what the district might be, might be considering doing regarding facilities. It will be important to let the community know your possible plans with facilities, particularly the middle school, before you are ready to engage residents about any future referendum capital bond questions. I know I'm not there to answer any questions you might have. I can tell you the results of the survey are encouraging. I'm often asked what I would recommend to a district and I always remind administrators and school board members to trust the data. 437 responses may not seem like a lot, but it represents more than 33% of your K-12 student population. The surveys we have done in Wisconsin for school districts in 2022 have ranged in participation from 18 to 40%. If you do have additional questions, please let Superintendent Wormuth know what they are and I will respond to them right away. Thank you.